Welcome to another episode of Searching for MacGuffin with your hosts, George, Gabe, and Link. I almost said Dan. You almost said the wrong name. I almost said, I don't know why, I'm just so used to like, I don't even, does Dan even go after you? George. It's Dan, Dan, Gabe, yeah, 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 he does. I don't know, I'm just so used to it. Oh, so you're just going to go right. Oh, because he goes next, but not because he replaced you? Yeah, that's why. I'm just so used to the order of hearing it. That makes a lot of sense. And also, I probably just miss Dan. Yeah, we miss you, Dan, wherever you are. Um, hey, it's another week on the show, and we got another hot, fresh topic for you. Oh, yeah, I'm back also. Yeah, and he's back, back again. Where were you? Gabe is back. Tell your friend. Not Russia? Yeah, mm. definitely not You're Russia. Not, not Russia, yeah. okay. Yeah. Our ratings go sky high whenever you're on and then they did you ever watch that movie sky high yeah no i've heard good things about it you haven't seen it no i haven't dude did you watch it yeah it's like a disney channel movie yeah like it's good like in the sense of like i grew like i yeah. watched it growing up I was gonna, didn't you grow up watching disney channel movies? no i didn't have cable growing up oh you know, no but it's not a disney channel it's movie you it's said not it's like, but it, it's it. like yeah they would show it there a lot i had it on dvd i don't know what happened to it mm. i really enjoyed it it was oh. like the original Avengers for me. <laughs> okay. Or the actually no, it was like a live action Incredibles. Aren't they getting a sequel? I thought the original no, Avengers was just busing film, uh, reporting lies. Oh, <laughs> they said report in live. No. How dare they report live? No, they report lies. Those oh. man, that account gets me, dude. I don't so many times, but it's so wrong. Like the B is so wrong. I don't. No? This, like what? Like probably like to see? Yeah. I I don't know yeah. the profile picture. The what account are we talking about? You know how disgusting film is like the usually like mm. the main Twitter movie TV media thing that reports things. Yeah, is it? I don't know. There's like a parody. Apparently, there's like a well. If I mean for me and like I guess just like our group chat. That's where we get most. Of yeah, that's where I from. get my information from the group so, chat. So, um, there's that other account called Disbussing Film. It's just mm. plenty and that's of lies. What you off. And yeah, because it, I mean yeah, the B is different, but I don't know. It's just. I start off with the first letter and then the ing, and but then the profile picture. Do you have to follow them in order to get their feed? No, people retweet it or like it or it just shows up. Oh, in their profile, so yeah. you could even block them yeah, and you'll still see. Oh no, you can, no, you can you block, block them, them and you'll yeah, see. You won't and see you won't see anything. So won't I guess do that. I, I guess I should block it. <laughs> I feel like part of you. Oh, but likes same, okay. to know the fake news. But the same time too is like people in the group chat will send it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. Cause so you could even block it. Like it'll just like be pictures that I'm looking. I'm like, and then I look at the B and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, you just caught off guard by the images and the titles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all that to say, I like Sky High. Link would have usually pivoted the Twitter speak into a plug for our social media. That's right. We have a social media. (laughs) We do follow us S Four M Podcast on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. YouTube, Twitter. I think it's good. Be real? Do we have yeah. a be real yet? These are getting more shameless as yeah. the weeks progress. Do we have a be real? Ah, uh, let's be real. We do not have a be real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guess we're not real. Okay. We're not real yet. Indeed. You'll explain to me off air what that means. Um, do not follow S4M Bodcast. That is a different. Yeah. Yeah, that is they, a different. They, they talk about lies. Yeah. No, that, it is not safe for work. Is this Ooh. an actual thing? <laughs> I don't know. And I wish we did. We now had now a, we should kind of yeah. do it. Don't, don't tell anybody. Oh, cut this. Edit. Mm, oh, I, Dan's not here. Oh, no. Mm, oh, they're going to know. Yeah. No one really pays One day we'll learn how to edit this ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so last week you weren't here. We talked about two really important things to you. I don't know if you even had time to like roll back and let you, you behind like some of our listeners. I, um, I don't even know what we talked about last week. I heard the first. It was the half. monthly. It was the monthly. Oh yes, I heard the first half. Okay, so the first. Well, two... I heard I heard the first half because I'm not gonna lie. I kind of skipped the Pokemon part. Oh 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 no! Dare oh. You. But you sat in for that whole Pokemon episode before. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie. I. Did <laughs> All right now, see, and now you're so influential see, that now now, now you're gonna buy the Pokemon game thinking it's good. Yeah, ex- exactly. No, I don't play Pokemon. Yeah, now you're going to hear, oh, new Pokemon game? I'm going to give this yeah. a try. But because he didn't listen to that part, you're not going to know that you should not you're buy just it. You're just going to come. We're going to create a campaign 
of false narratives around this game. Like, oh, if you don't even have to like Pokemon, it's probably the greatest game out there. And we're going to drip feed it to you through all your friends and family. Like, mm. all the important yeah. people you actually mm. listen to. Yeah. S4M Bodcast. Bodcast, exactly. It's going to put game of the year. And then you're just going to blind buy it as an impulse. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't listen. So if you didn't listen to the Pokemon conversation at last month's monthly, which was so beautifully titled Gal... Guardians. Oh, Guardians. Another G word. Glitches. Glitches. Which, guess what that was about. And Glass Onion. Then please listen to it so that you can know... I don't know what the Guardian part's for. We talked about the, the Guardian. special? The Guardian holiday special. Oh, I haven't seen yeah. it. So I guess that was... You the... haven't seen it? Dude, okay. I haven't seen anything. I literally just... Caught up on what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Have you been watching, really quick before we talk about, because I think we're going to talk about this later, but there was two topics that we really missed you on that conversation. Number one was the World Cup. Have you been watching that? Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about sports later on this season. And the other topic that we were talking about is the end of Star Wars Andor. Right? You got to finish this show? I literally finished it hours ago. Um, full my, disclosure. my, my, uh, world cup prediction got eliminated. Yes, that did happen. Who is your world cup? Prediction? Qatar. No. Ah, oh, make them listen to the episode. Oh, or watch. But you no, missed. No, I'm pretty sure I got to that part. Oh, <laughs> that's why I was actually wondering. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. And now you're going to bet on Qatar because s 4 m Podcast is going to yeah. choose it as its pick it. for the finals. Uh, finals, yeah. yeah. Mm. And yeah. they're going to host again after the United States. They're gonna, they're you heard it again. here first, s 4 m Podcast. Oh, because you guys were talking about uh, FIFA and how they're corrupt. Yeah, we did. Oh, talk. they were corrupt. I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry. No. Oh, well, actually, the president I heard, and I don't know if this was true or if this was this busing film, but he said he was open to North Korea hosting the World Cup in the future. That might have been this busting film. No. Honestly, no. Like, I heard some of the comments he was making at a press conference, and I'm like, what? <laughs> so, maybe still evil? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe just you'll, openly evil, not under the... Yeah. Like, maybe you'll have Kanye it. sing the World Cup song next time. <laughs> at, he at, is persona non grata. At, in, <laughs> in, uh, in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you imagine that an evil empire hosting, like, the biggest world sports... Uh, event yeah it's like in Star Wars that is true what a transition there is an evil empire but not only is there an evil empire here on earth but there's also an evil empire in a galaxy far far away and a long time ago that's where Star Wars takes place a long time ago but it goes even a longer longer time ago right because is this when does Andor take place this show we talked like five minutes on the show. I know because I timed it uh, last month. But when does this show take place? Great question. You should never ask a question that you don't know. Your co-host doesn't know the answer. So that is, that is on question. me. Honestly, I probably do know. But I am. It's, I think it's five years before Rogue One. So that makes it like five years before New Hope. Right? Yeah. It's like running concurrent with Star Wars Rebels, the animated series. Rebels is... How many seasons did they run? Oh, yeah. I think it's okay. three or four. I think it's yeah, four. Like four. Right. So, like, I think this show ends around the time Rebel starts. Yeah. So, anyways. The whole point of this conversation is we previewed this at the beginning of the season. We touched upon it because it had just finished last week. But this topic, I think, is big enough to explore over the course of one episode. Because, as we've mentioned earlier on star wars is kind of key and critical uh to this entire stratosphere of media right yeah one of the first things i wanted to talk about is what is star wars i think i've asked this question before but one thing i want to hone in on for this conversation is the idea that star wars is not a genre but rather, it's a world, a universe, so to speak. A galaxy in their terms, right? A series. Okay, well, it's more than a series, I think. No? Series of shows, movies. But it's like series of series. Yeah. Right? And each of them have their own, like... A franchise. A franchise. Okay, yeah, a franchise. But sometimes we kind of get bogged down in creating identities for things. Like, 
placing ideas in a box and kind of constraining them to what they can be. So what makes this show so critically important and what makes it different than what has come before? Just blank stairs. I was texting someone. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what makes the show different? This show, I mean, it's not, I guess it's different from what we've gotten from Star Wars recently. Mm-hmm. But for me, I think that this, this show harkens back to what Star the what the crux of Star Wars is. Which is to you? I mean, it's, it's hope. <laughs> oh, wow. <We're> just <laughs> Template answer. Right yeah. Um, but it's, it's a reflection, I think, of society and how when you not it's not really enslaved. I guess it is enslavement, but when you try to like hold people down or try to lead people by a dictatorship and just like lead like leading by like an iron like an iron will, it just doesn't it's gonna breed rebellion one mm-hmm. way or another. Yeah. And and I mean we'll get into it. There was a there was a there was something that you texted the group. Yeah, chat, yeah. I think when one of the episodes that we watched that I thought was, I hadn't seen the episode yet, but you had texted it and I was like, oh, this must be a quote from the episode. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh man, I know exactly where it's going to go. And it didn't happen. I'm like, where did you pull that from? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the idea that I extracted from the show up until that point, And we'll talk about it when we get there. But just that dichotomy of learning about that driving force, that MacGuffin that like propels us forward through seeing hope, but also through seeing hopelessness as well too. Because I think sometimes when there is no hope, you come to understand the necessity of it. And we'll get into that nuts and bolts. Um, t- what about you, Link? What do you think makes Andor unique, worthy of discussion? What makes it unique? Yeah. You know, you ask what is Star Wars and uh, for me, I always make that when I think of Star Wars, one of the first things that comes to my mind are Jedi's. You get me mm-hmm. lightsabers. Yeah. Um, battle between good and evil. And what makes Andor special is that you really don't see at all Jedi's in Andor. Yeah, that's like like at all. At, at all. all. At that's all, it. At We're all. done. And like, done. I think the closest we got to that before was maybe the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. where you would, didn't you know, I didn't see many. You, you, you saw some Luke, right? Um, at season one, it's like okay, the, the Jedi's were like a like a, a, a things of the past. You really mm-hmm. haven't seen any. You really don't see that. But then afterwards, as the show progresses, you, and in Boba, you see Jedi's and they play a role in the shows. Well, even for in like season one of Mandalorian, where you think like oh, there's no Jedi's, but it's like Grogu's in the end of the and pilot, like, yeah, and this show's about a Force wielder. Yeah. Like he's like almost like a co leader. Yeah, exactly. You don't even yeah. have any of that in the show, and it's interesting because it's uh, it seems like it's a show that's going on in the background. Mm-hmm. Of what Star Wars should be, yeah, and because it's because it's in the background, it's like why would I want to watch this? It has nothing to. It's not interesting. Mm. There's no lightsabers. There's no force. Yeah. There's no Jedi. Okay, this sounds kind of boring. Yeah, and it's almost like there's no payoff. Even yeah, exactly. We'll talk about his connection to Rogue One, obviously, but it's almost like it's very finite. It's very yeah. little. We know that it'll hook us to this one film. You know, maybe eventually, but we've our only reference point is this one character, Andor. Yeah. And it's more some distant rock somewhere else and the events that takes place there. Sometimes it kind of feels like like a history. Like a political show, show, yeah. Yes, yes. The show is very political. Mm. And I, I read someone say that it's probably the most political Star Wars series yet. And that doesn't mean what it sounds like it means. And yeah, because you don't even see the Senate or stuff, uh, the, the, politi- the politics like that. Right. And I think it has a lot to say about social politics, not partisan politics, not like, you know, the specific issues we deal with, but yes, the universal issues that I think all societies deal with. And I think a lot of that manifests itself throughout this show. I think it's deep. I think it's profound, the show, Mm. in a way that some of the stuff we've got on lately hasn't been super deep and profound. You didn't think think that... uh... Vader versus uh, Obi Wan was wasn't deep at all. Is that a real question or is that oh that's sarcasm? No, no, that's real. No, that's real no, question. That's a real question. 
Oh, I didn't really think it was that deep at you all. Yeah. Think, Did you guys? You didn't think Obi Wan was deep at all? No. You didn't think it's deep that he starts off as a sushi maker in Tatooine? You know, that was we're off to a good start, but it's all downhill after mm. sushi one Kenobi. I mean, at the same time, like you talk about, like what is Star Wars to you? And I think that's the main thing is Star Wars is different for everybody. Yes, that that is true. Like it can be one thing for you, it can be something different for me. I think we spend so much time talking about this that we more or less kind of have like a similar understanding, like of where we all sit. Mm -hmm. But like. For some people, the Jedi and the lightsabers and, and the Force is everything that Star Wars is yeah. to that person. Um, like, I just, like, I know a lot of people that are like, oh, why would I watch it? Like, there's not really anything interesting about that. And I mean, for me, and from my, from my stand, it's like, you're missing out. Like, I mm -hmm. think you're missing out. If you're into this kind of stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's like, drama. Yeah, it's Star Wars. Like, wouldn't you want to, like, if, it, if you hear it's good, like, wouldn't you want to try it out give it a shot? Um... I think too that this show like do you and I'm sorry hold on do you think you need Star Wars for this show what if someone hasn't watched Star Wars can they start here or if someone hasn't watched Star Wars maybe they can get like a I, quick recap I think the show is I think the show is great like just the show on its own mm -hmm. I think to really appreciate and for it to reach the heights that it for me it has I think you should watch Star Wars okay like, because the thing about it, it's in the details of this show. And that was the thing I loved about Rogue One. That yeah. it's like, this is like a continuation of that. And like I said, like, I think it depends on like what you feel Star Wars is to you. Like what it is to you. Um, because some people, some people may love the prequels. Some people may hate the prequels. Going back to the Obi-Wan thing. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you were thinking it was sarcasm about the whole Vader and, and Obi-Wan thing. When for I like I I know for a lot for, for a fact a lot of people were like that was really emotional for them you know and that's fair too because I've come to the terms that like what Star Wars is for me isn't what it is for other people and that that's okay I'm okay with that and it's funny because you mentioned like that wasn't deep because to me I'm more of a parts of a whole guy so it's hard for me to be like yeah that was excellent but everything else I didn't really like for me and maybe it's a bad habit I tend to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But it was like, if I didn't like the overall experience, then then I can't really latch on to those moments. I guess objectively, I can go back and there's like, there was parts of there that I was enjoy enjoying it throughout the journey. But by the time it was all over, it was like, I didn't like this at all, like entirely. Yeah. And I think, I think it's not like, obviously, we're all different people. That's where I think some of us might differ. Because when I, when I consume something like, yeah, as much as I'd love for it to be complete and whole and and be happy with yeah. that, I've realized that there are a lot of times where it's like something, a lot of like, I don't know what it is. A lot of times, a lot of things don't stick to landing. Yeah. Or there's rough patches and stuff like that. Like um, Game of Thrones, for example. Like Game of, for me, Game of Thrones was like, I guess I've gone to bargaining, the bargaining stage of the ending. Right. I wasn't really a fan of it, but it was like, man, there was just, there was moments that I really did enjoy about it. That I really did have fun. And it's like, to me, like, that's why it's still, I really rate that show. Like, I really still kind of enjoy the experience of that show, even though, like, where the story led, it wasn't necessarily the best. But I try to take the pieces of the things that I like in something and, and try to enjoy the most out of it. Some things, like, anger me <laughs> because I'm so passionate about this stuff. Yeah. So, like, so certain stuff in Obi-Wan, I was just kind of like, uh, it's frustrating. But the theme that I'm trying to, I feel like I've been going through in my life is kind of like trying to see the best parts of something. Yeah. Not to, not to be blind mm -hmm. or like to avoid or, or to just overlook those things. But I think to, to appreciate the best in, in anything that you do, anything that you consume or, or take on. So that's why like with that Obi-Wan, I mean, I'm not trying to hark on the Obi-Wan thing, but I, I enjoyed the battle. There was parts of the, in the battle, even in the battle, I didn't enjoy the story. I didn't enjoy parts of the story, but it was nice to see you went back. It was nice to see him back. Yes, it was nice yes. to get Hayden back, you know, and it must be emotional for them. Mm -hmm. Like getting back, going back into those roles after so many years, after so much, you know, yeah. public discourse about all this stuff going on with the prequels and, and all that. But, um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed that stuff. So I think that, I guess Link does have a point. Like there are, there have been emotional beats yeah. in the Star you Wars. You know what? Shows. There's, there's good things there. Yeah, yeah, that's but, fair. But I think, 
I do. I will say that I don't think anything comes close to this show. As far as like quality. The S4M podcast? Yeah. S4M podcast. <laughs> S4M podcast got nothing on us. So Andrew. Andrew. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like. It's kind of hard to not feel like you're in an echo chamber. Because if you didn't like that. And then you get exactly what you want next. It's kind of easy to like dig your heels in and be like, see, see. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that's the message that you know i'm trying to get across or that we're trying to get across Mm -hmm. with that even you mentioned the fact that we're kind of all in the same sphere so we tend to respond in the same ways but even then there's degrees because as i'm watching a show like this i'm watching it sometimes in a vacuum because our schedules have been so crazy and or specifically it was like i would go weeks that we wouldn't discuss what's top what is happening because you guys are two weeks behind someone's a week ahead you know and it's you're watching it in a vacuum and just wondering like are they gonna enjoy it as much as i do are they enjoying it as much as yeah you know are they gonna like this are they not gonna like this you know and i think obi-wan was that tales of the jedi was that too everybody kind of watched it whenever they could so there wasn't a conversation about it like as it happened oh yeah you you really like it huh yeah, I really enjoyed. Yeah, he said it was better yeah, than said, all of Star Wars. He That's said what he it was said. like he said it was, it was up like there with, the, with the greatest Star Wars ever made. It was up so, there with Andor and Mandalorian. The best Star Wars yeah, that but, there has ever been. Yeah. Wow, I'm trying to like push his button with the hype. He's just it. leaning into it. No, yeah, it. yeah, I thought it was good. It's yeah. up there with uh. Don't say Rogue it. One. The sinister. Oh, Rogue One, his yeah. favorite Star Wars movie. My favorite Star yeah. Wars movie. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Which, by the I way, heard all, I heard which, by the way, gave us a great show called Andor. I heard all of this part. <laughs> I know. This is where you, like, flex. Like, see, I told you. I told you it was good. Yeah, we all knew it was good. No, was, I... But have you read Catalyst, the novel? If not, my dad can give you the spark notes. Yeah, in fact... They're I'm not gonna, necessarily short. They're like, it's... He's just going to recite the, the book to you. The spark notes are longer than the book, yeah. actually. He actually he, reads he the adds, chapter. He adds his own in-depth and analysis. And then he, like, he stops. Your dad does this? Yeah. He, no, he did this. He read the book. Like leading up, what is it? Leading up to leading up to, leading Rogue, up to one. Rogue One. Uh huh. He read the book and then called me and then ex- like just talked to me three hours, mm. three hours about it. Can we can we have it. him just oh for three hours just oh, do that by himself? Let's do a by bonus him, episode by himself. Where yeah, where we yeah. just talk about Rogue One. Well, he <laughs> no no he. Well, we listen to him, him. talk about yeah. Rogue One. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be in that room. No, you have to be in the room because we already heard it once. So I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he got off the phone. His with, idea. Yeah, he's like, yeah, no, I'm good. He got off the phone with you. And then he called me the same night and just had the same the conversation. conversation. Mm. He had a six-hour conversation yeah. with both of us. <laughs> About a book that neither of us had read. Now we got to read it. But that's the kind of emotion that this kind of stuff, like insights in the fandom. You mentioned that you've been kind of living your life like that. Do you feel that looking for the brightness, even amongst... Like those dark spots, is that something that kind of translates to your to your everyday life? No, man, it's it's the craziest thing because like like I said, I watched it this morning, and I like this is like a specific example, I guess. But I watched it this morning, and like I've just been super stressed lately. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, um, with school, I got like a lot going on at school. Um, so it's just I don't know. It's like a weird time in my life. Um. But man, there's certain parts like what was it where I'm so busy that I just I'm so like I in a defeated in a way where like I don't feel like watching TV, I don't feel like watching anything. I just feel like just either sleeping or just studying or doing nothing. Mm-hmm. But man, I saw Andor today. I was wa- I was watching. I didn't finish the second the penultimate episode. So I was I was finishing that one. And I mean, no spoilers, but there's like remember that like you had mentioned it's like the most Star Wars. It's like one of the most Star Wars episodes. Yes. In Andor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when that part happens, I'm like, I was sitting on a chair and my friend was watching it. What part are you talking about? Yeah, I think it's okay. All right. Full disclosure. We're going to get into minor sto- uh, minor spoilers. We're not going to go episode by episode. We're not going to go through the plot, but I think there is going to be thick points of discussion yeah. that will real. So if you haven't seen it, if you don't mind minor spoilers, okay. Then by all means keep listening. If you haven't, honestly, take our word for it. If you trust our word, go watch Andor. If you haven't, if you don't trust our word, go watch Andor anyways. Do it anyways. Okay. Yeah. But the, the right. part where um where Luthen gets stopped 
Like after he talks to Saw, he's got stopped in his ship and they're gonna put him in the track. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Game. And then, like, that was I was sitting in my part. chair and, like, I don't know, like, the whole episode, like, I was paying attention, but, like, I, I guess I wasn't, like, just, like, super into it. Like, uh-huh. I was there, but I wasn't, like, in it, in it. And it was, like, one of those, like, Star Wars moments where it's, like, you see the shot of the ships and now they're turning on the tractor beam and the Empire is going to get him. And I just perked. I was, like, wait, hold up. What? I, like, got comfortable. Like, and I, like, I was in it. Mm-hmm. You and just got drawn in. Exactly. I was, was, the it was like a tractor being just threw me in there. <laughs> um, kind of reminded me of uh, uh, Maverick. Oh, Top yeah. Gun. Yeah. Top when, gun. when the tractor beam pulls in. Uh, yeah. The jet. The jet yeah. Yeah. I love that. It was. Um, and then I was like, all right, I'm re- like, I'm up. I'm awake because I was like, I'm exhausted. But like, I was like, I woke up and then I started the next episode and the next episode, like, there's last, just the last one, right? The last one, yeah. Mm. When she gives the speech, mm-hmm. Minerva, Merva, Merva, Merva. Yeah, her, her, his mom. Um, when she gives that speech, like I got goosebumps, and I was like, man, and I don't know, it just took me out of like a, it took me from a point where I was like so, not distracted, but I guess focused on my studies and the school and like just like being overwhelmed by the stress of that. Yeah. And it took me out a bit. Then I was just like, it's not, maybe not the same message that she's saying, but I don't know. There was just a feeling that like, it calmed me down a bit. And it kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. It was such a weird feeling, but like certain things like that, like when, um, by the way, I thought in that speech, it was yeah. a beautiful speech. Yeah. I felt like she needed to drop the F word. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring it up. <laughs> she needed to drop the F word there and it would have been perfect. No. Um, so you want to finish your thought because actually yeah. that and the ship are two things that I want to address. Yeah. But um, what was um, the prison leader's name? Do you remember? Uh, Golem. Golem. <laughs> okay, Golem. When Golem has his speech He's in the prison. He's played by Andy Circus. Yeah, Andy yeah. Circus. When when he has his speech in the that was another moment like that. I'm just like, yeah. man, they are killing it mm-hmm. with yeah. these like with inspirational these speeches. speeches. Once this- again, an, an, deserved enough a bomb. <laughs> The, the, I don't think that was on the on the line in that one. Mm, I felt like these speeches deserve need it. <laughs> there, uh, I think the tightest scripting I think we've seen from Star Wars, maybe since Disney took over. Yeah, because like I love Solo and Rogue One, but I don't think they're as well written as this show is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't think any show is written as written. As but this. but yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just the con- any, like anything Disney does or any show on television. No, any 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 Star Wars show. Yeah, show absolutely. Yeah. In history. Nah, I will, I'll throw in Marvel and Disney and everything. I don't think anything on Disney pro- or anything Disney produces is as well written as this show. Does, does Daredevil count? No, they didn't produce it. Okay, good. Yeah. I'd maybe draw the line there. No, but even then, even then, because I don't. Daredevil's a great scripted show, but there's like I don't know. There's a level of like again political commentary and philosophy that is being shared like exposition it's almost like a play like monologues yeah yeah and and i if i remember correctly it's been a couple years now you don't get that kind of like dialogue you get that you do but in 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 action no i no i think you do you do you get it like in fighting no no even more that i think i think there is a lot of spots where where matt and matt and matt where matt has these conversations and it's like with about faith and character yeah, and about, yeah, yeah about who okay. he is as a, as a, as a man and, and who he wants to be yeah especially when in season three when he's struggling with i gotta rewatch is. i gotta rewatch that whole show no you have to because yeah. that like rewatching it just made me appreciate it even more that show's amazing okay um but, but disney it, didn't produce it so true. there you go still stands true. forget you disney so i guess it's i guess it's just the emotional connection that i have to star wars yeah. that it's like certain things like that can just pull me out of a rut and yeah. it's the craziest thing is like you're literally watching TV show and, and that's what ha- that that's what you get from it. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, yeah, that, that's yeah. pretty much how it is. Like, the you know what that, that is? What? That, that's catharsis. Called antidepressant. Mm. Sure. Do you get that from therapy? We do get. Yeah, I mean, you get that from yeah from expelling out your emotions, right? I mean, we don't get it's... that. Our viewers do every time they watch like and listen listeners. To us. Well, I get it at my therapist, but yes. <laughs> Um, and I don't know. It's just crazy to think that uh, a TV show or a movie can can do that for you. Yeah, and it really just because I don't know. You tell it to somebody and they're like, "What?" Like if they don't share it, they don't. If they're not on that, 
if they don't see it the same way you do, mm-hmm. then it can be kind of like confusing for them. Yeah. Like, why would you feel that way? But everybody that? has something, yeah. right? It, like for some people, it's sports. For some people, it's music. For some people, it's a little bit of all of that. You know what I mean? But they have that one thing, you know? Yeah. Everybody interacts with the world around them in some way. For some, it's food, you know? Mm-hmm. And and for most people, it's all they have their their preferences and all those things that kind of I don't want to say medicate, but kind of you know structure and facilitate balance in their life. Going back to what you said about the most Star Wars moment on the show towards the end when he's going to be boarded by the tractor beam and he gets out of that, that was actually a controversial moment from what I've heard some discussions like. The the laser, I don't even know how you would describe it. That the ship has it what? shoots out. Yeah. yeah, it's like everybody keeps saying they're like lightsabers. I don't sure. I don't feel like I thought it was flare. No, because it cuts like so. It's like oh yeah yeah a yeah, light yeah, yeah blade. I wouldn't say it's like a lightsaber. I wouldn't I say, say I didn't like feel that way. way. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's like a lightsaber either. But people were like, I'd say it's like what that thing that Tony has when he's like. When he's a war machine in Iron Man. Yeah, exactly. Right. I just think it's like a concentrated laser blast that can cut through stuff, right? And I think that's Star Wars, but some people were like, oh, que baguette. Like, where did he get these, like, advanced blades? I mean, the guy's super rich, and he's, like, he's trying to lead a rebellion rebellion without knowing that he's actually doing that. So I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, I, I didn't brush up against it, but some people were like, oh, that was so, like, action heavy. What I loved about that scene was that a show can be this drawn out. And again, I think I've addressed it before. If you think it's too slow at first, if you took it taking too much time, it does build up world and character, but there is action to be had on this show. And I think it's nice that he can just ramp up the energy real fast and give I mean, us that Star Wars that's moment. That's how I felt because the whole time I was kind of like, okay, just here. And then immediately it, once that happens, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I think the show does that. It's so... Cause that's what would happen to me. Like it's so slow, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes after an episode, I was like, okay, this was good, but slow. The show, it takes its time. But it's once you look at like the bigger, at, picture. the bigger picture. Once you like finish that last episode, and you're like, you see how beautifully drawn out everything. Is. And how you individually, didn't waste any time. You didn't waste any time. But mm-hmm. individually, you might suffer a bit. I'm like, okay, yeah. Because like I wasn't like. I get more. Ex- I would get more excited watching one episode of The Mandalorian than I did yes. here, right? Mm-hmm. Because everything was slower, drawn out, right? They were pacing everything. But afterwards, I can tell you, whoa, this is this is better than Mandalorian, in my opinion. Right, right, because it's I, it's almost like Mandalorian, especially early on, and even in season two, it's got kind of like the three act structure every episode. Yeah, it's like that, like case of the week. There's so many bottle episodes mm. that are all building to the end. But they're telling their own story. So you get the payoff every, every single every week. Episode, yeah. yeah, it's like a mini movie, right? But here, I'm watching bits and pieces of yeah. like an almost 12 hour movie, you know, or something like that. Probably like nine, because they're about 40 minutes or so. It was so good. Once I got to the end and just hitting the anvil, creating the tension, building the tension, having all the characters that have shown, like pretty much all the characters that are important in play in, in the story. Mm hmm all show up to this one location because they're all waiting for the main character to arrive. Mm, yeah. yeah. And it's like everything is just coming down to this moment. Everything's about to go down. And it's just the part where like how they like set that up, him list like him actually like listing and reading Nemec's manifesto mm-hmm. and and how that like is influencing his character, is changing himself before his like our very yeah. eyes. And how he makes a dis- how he makes a simple decision to like yeah, he has a lot of emotional connection to the place where to Ferrix and like obviously like his mother, but like he still wants to go get Bix. Yeah, at the heart of it, that's all he wants to do. Do you watch the previous Leon? Uh, not for the last one, but I usually do. Okay, because I would every week, and obviously when it's week to week, and my wife would be like, "Okay, we we'll just skip it." I was like, "No," because sometimes they'll be like, "Previously, six weeks ago, eight weeks, you know, yeah. the yeah, manifesto." They, they, they bring, stuff. They, bring <laughs> the, they bring the they bring the important parts of the episode that are going to be important to the episode on the previous day. Yeah. That's intentional. I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Um, what was the climax of the show for you? Because I have one this one specific part, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, this is the best part. The prison. The prison. Well, well, okay, explain. Like when they're getting out of prison? Like when they get out of prison? When they're breaking out, yeah. I feel like this show is like, 
I feel like the prison arc is its own show. Yeah. In a weird way. It's almost like I don't, uh, other people were telling me that when he gets off planet and he escapes and then he randomly gets arrested at the end of the episode. Yeah, I felt. Yeah. Yeah. I felt, but I was like, I kind of feel like the sh- season is over and then him getting arrested is the after credit scene. There was, that sets up yeah. the and or 1.5 mm. season of being in prison. It's weird because it's like it feels like there's a couple because also the heist. The heist was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The heist was incredible, man. There's just so many pieces where it's like it'll tell story, it'll build upon it, and then it'll have those moments. Mm. Yeah. And I think they do it like three times. They do it. Yeah, they do. Like the first time where they fight on Ferrix, mm-hmm. the heist, then the second time, and then the last, the, the four times, I guess. Yeah. For me, the climax is that moment that you that you mentioned the fight the empire, mm. and you talked about um, the possible profanity. In case our listeners or viewers don't understand uh, Link's reference, there was I believe it was an ad lib. It wasn't scripted, but they wanted to include that in that moment on the set, and it kind of got like overrided, and they had to. Stick to the mm. script if oh, I got I didn't the situation. Know that. They were going to yeah. say that? Did she actually say that? Oh, you, wait. You didn't know that? No. I just thought, this deserves an F-bomb right here. Are you serious? Yeah. That came out of nowhere? You didn't know about this? No. Oh, I thought that was a direct reference to this. Yeah. that sh- I believe it was the actress or someone told the actress, let's do this. And I'm not sure if they it was, tried it. It was Tony. It was Tony Gilroy. <laughs> yeah. I know it was Tony Gilroy. <laughs> and I'm not sure if they got it on tape or not, but I know they couldn't use it Um, you know, in the final edit. Does the F word exist in, in it, it would far, mean far away? it would mean that it exists, you know, in uh now. Like that would be introducing it. Cause actually I don't think was the S word in like um the the sequel movies, the newer movies? No. I don't think so, right? So this is the introduction of of that word. I think the first hard profanity in uh in Star Wars. Uh, mm. I mean now nowadays it's kind of soft hard, but still yeah. something you can't just say over like public airways. Yeah. yeah. Right? So that would have been the first one and they wanted to go all the way. How do you guys feel about that? Maybe let me tell you my climax my favorite. Okay, hit climax. it, hit it. Climax. What's the name of that lady? Mm-hmm. There's more times we said climax than I expected this episode. So what's the name of the, the lady from the Empire? Um from, oh. Driva? Deidre? Deidre. Yeah, Deidre. Bro, when she got hit with the rock yeah, she was getting wrecked. When she got hit with a rock, I'm like, this show is amazing. That was his climax. <laughs> that was my climax. Man, I found yeah, that because I really hated that character so much. For me, it was the sexual tension between him. Her. Between her, her. That was weird. The weirdo. And him, yeah. yeah. And, the, and he's like, I love you. And she's like, I don't, but I'm going to stare deeply into your eyes. But thank but you. I, for but I, her say, I should say thank you. And yeah. I might have a concussion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm concussed. He's going to gaslight her. And yeah. He's gonna but man, to... but when she got hit with the rock and she fell, yeah. I never... I felt like I got so much vindication there. Yeah. Because I really... Because you really hate these Yes, characters. you want her to get some so comeuppance, dumb. right? Exactly. And, and I'll take a like, rock. And it seems it. like this is not the type of show that's yeah. going to give you a comeuppance. Yes. Because yes. it's too... A comeuppance might be like too... Too fine. safe. Too, too safe, right? Too yeah. babyish. Like mm-hmm. below it. But we don't that, always get... We don't yeah. always get it. But that moment right there, I was like, bro, thank nah, you. I think everyone did. What's his name? The guy that sells... That's the guy that sells them out. That sells out Andor. Oh, the, the, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. The chubby guy? Oh, the guy that's with Bix early on, right? Oh, no. that guy too. No, that glad. guy, that guy too. Oh, okay. That guy too. The no, other, the other the guy, guy that the, gets killed in prison, episode. right? Or in the, not prison, but in the... Remember, he's detained. a snitch and he tells the, the mole. Yeah. And then they take him and then they have the explosion. Even when then, the mole gets killed too. Oh, yeah. That felt good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my yeah. goodness! Why so you're I... saying we do get justice, more justice than we expect? Why am I? Yeah. Why am I feeling good about people dying? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe you gotta explore that. Maybe watch too many episodes of Monster this this month. Mm. What's that? Well, you gotta listen oh, to you last week's episode. Recommendation, my dude. Yeah. Fall of anime, or yeah, anime of fall. That's a segment. Oh. No, he called it fall of anime. It does sound it's like falling. anime is, is falling. falling off. No, it's just autumn. No, it's just, yeah, uh, the fall uh, season. <laughs> So, um, so you didn't know about that moment of the language. How do you guys feel about in- introducing? Okay, this show introduces a lot of stuff into Star Wars. A little, Sex. sure that word. Um, yeah, uh, first time that that's depicted in um, Star Wars. Like not depicted. It's not depicted. There's not like a love scene, but it's very heavily implied the before and the after. You know, it took place. I don't think we've ever gotten anything like that in Star Wars. You think so, they have condoms in Star Wars? Um, Maybe. 
I, mean, I, th- I like to think that the, the science has just right? like, gotten rid of the diseases. Disease? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, they have like, like it's in the vaccine, water. Yeah. yeah. It's just they pump it straight the into it. Mm. The midi Yeah. The, like a midi chlorian vaccine that just. Mm. But this is the first time we get indication like that. The uh, some coarser some language. Diego Luna was yeah, it's not it's not rated R by any sense of the word, but a little more grown up take on Star Wars. I don't think you need the F word. Yeah, I don't think. I, you I don't think you need. I think you, could, I think you could make your own type of words in the in yeah. Galaxy Far. Like, what was it? Uh, Frack in, in yes. Battlestar Star Galactica. Yeah. Like I'm okay with using stuff like that. I don't know. Like what's some of the Star Wars curses? Uh, Dank Ferric. Dank Ferric. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think you need. That's the thing. I feel like Star Wars can make their own. Uh, alternative. Um, I mean, I mean, just what like linguistics or yeah, or curse words or whatever. Yeah, sure, and Pro- stuff like that. Yeah. Profanity, profane statements. Yeah. Um. So if they would have done it, I would have been like, mm, I get that. I feel like if you do say that, then it's like you really feel the weight behind it. Mm-hmm. But I felt the way behind it, like I, with what they said. You yeah. Know, I would argue that you'd feel less weight behind it because making a statement like that, like using the F word would be like these specific people, like, like, you know, like, like, you know, like screw them basically is the message. Right. But to fight them, I think that's a bigger idea. I think to fight is bigger than to screw off because I think that is wherever you are with whatever tools you have. I think, fight yeah. and keep fighting. Because I think that's, that's what more they Because that's what they do. Yeah. I think that's what... Um, so I guess you're right. I think fight is more impactful. Um, I also think it would have been... I don't know. They always said it, it would have been weird. It would have been weird. I think it would have been weird. I think it would have made like, the moment weird. It would have been weird. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, we're doing this? Like, yeah. Oh, we're doing this. Yeah. Where's, where is, it would have been so out of character. Is it going to... Yeah. Is it going to be... Is it going to be going on in Star Wars now? Like, where has it been? Like, yeah. Are we going to blow people's heads off next? You yeah. know? Which we've talked about lots of things where they blow people's heads off, but it just hasn't happened in Star Wars. So maybe like baby steps. Mm. The other thing is, too, that when you go through like that moment and it in, it elicits fighting you mentioned like you know that message connected with me maybe not so much that message but to me it is that message because it is a a kind of idea of rebellion you know it, i live a pretty safe and normal like everyday life but a part of me likes to see myself as a rebel in the little areas where i can like fight back you know what i mean cuz i think most of us like to believe that we're doing something to fight against the system, you know? And I think that it's like, don't forget who you are. Don't cave in to the structures that surround you. Most of us live in these structures, but always remember that, you know, without hope, there's no reason to move on. And going back to that thought that you had that I shared with you, uh, what, what was that moment, that moment that, and if you want to share like that idea, yeah, but you got to say it first because okay. I don't remember the exact words. So I remember... Yeah, it, hey, you tell me that idea that I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you said it impacted you. So just... It was the scene... Okay, I'll share the thought and then you tell me the scene where you thought it was coming because you were right. That's exactly where I thought of the idea. Yeah. But basically, I sent this message that when you stamp out hope, it breeds rebellion. And that's kind of that dichotomy that I mentioned early on in the episode where we talk about we talk about how hope drives you to fight forward, but also losing that hope drives you to fight forward because the the mistake that the Empire makes, especially in that prison arc, is that once there's no possibility of getting out alive, well, then you have nothing to lose, you know? And I think you thought that moment was coming... Yeah, when his name is Kino. That's what it was. Okay. Um, when Which when, is such an interesting character. Right? Andy, yeah. Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis' yeah, character, Andy character, Serkis character in the prison. When they start the prison break and they get, a, they get control of the, of the comms. Mm-hmm. And he's so conflicted because he's like, he's struggling with the fact that he's been doing this for so long that yeah. he's like, he's waiting. He's almost done with his sentence. He's waiting for it to happen. He's waiting for... Um, his release basically so he's like i gotta keep a tight i gotta keep a tight schedule make sure everyone's happy Mm -hmm. so that i can be released and get out of this finally 
till he finds out that no one's getting released. They're just going to send you somewhere else or kill you. Yeah. And, and that just shatters him. That just breaks him. And so, and And we see that in the end of that episode where like Andor's pestering him all throughout the episode of like how many guards there are. And he refuses like, shut up. I don't even want to talk about it because like I've already set my course. And by the end, when he finds out, he is such a powerful line. He just gives him the information. Like, Almost, and, almost. Can, and that's a tribute. That's a testament to Andy Circus. Like he's an incredible actor, and just like his delivery and how he says it, just conveys way more than what the line actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, so once they get to the comms, and he 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 looks at Andor, and Andor's like, "It has to be you. It can't be anyone, anybody else. Yeah. It has to be you." And so, because it's weird, it's like you usually expect the main character to be the person yes. like delivering these incredible speeches. Yeah, but we realize like. This story is about who Andor becomes. Yeah. Like his kind of his origin and how he becomes to the person we meet in Rogue One. And how like it even harkens back to like when he when he does he because he does kind of the same thing. He has a little speech, but then he also defers to Jin mm-hmm. for the, for her to have the speech. It's like right. he knows so like he knows his role. He knows what makes a good rebellion. Like he knows who can he knows, he knows who can who, speak, yeah, who, right. can, who has the words. Let's get this guy in front of a crowd. Yeah. Exactly. So he so he has Kino say he has Kino like and he just drops like such like an inspirational message where it's like I've never been to prison. I've never been to jail. I've never been on like basically enslaved mm-hmm. in that sense. So it's like I was like, man, get me out of here. Like I want to I want to help you fight. Like it was it was incredible. So then when you were saying that, I thought that was something he was going to say. And I was waiting for him to say it the whole time because I was like, that's probably, that has to be like the last thing he mm-hmm. says. But what's beautiful about that moment is that it says it without saying exactly, it. Mm. and that's like I think we're kind of used to being fed those lines, and those kind of lines are powerful, and we internalize them, and we put them on T-shirts, and we you know write them down, and we send them through a text. But for me to be able to extract that idea from a bunch of other words, that's just great writing, man. No, to the, know exactly what he's trying to tell mm. me. And the thing is, like, because that's the thing. It's like that's what I love about, especially like this show. It's not something. It's not necessarily something that's going to give you something straight up Mm -hmm. it's gonna make you work for it's gonna make you think about it and that i i enjoy that other people may not but i enjoy it's subtle exactly things that i have to look into things that i have to interpret for myself because it challenges you as because like you watch so much of this so much of like you consume so much media that it's like a lot of it is you just take it at face value and it's just there and it's entertaining yeah but it's like things that are thought provoking and make you think more and like actually stay with you Long after you finish watching whatever you're watching or mm-hmm. listening to, I think that's impactful and I think that's powerful. And that's what I love about this show. And that is the moment where I was like, this is the best piece. This is Star Wars. Yeah. And like I, I straight up, I texted you. I was like, this is the straight. This, I was like, bro, this is the most Star Wars. Star this Wars. is the most Star Wars thing I've seen since the original trilogy. Yeah. Like, it's insane. And it, it, it accentuates, it complements the original trilogy so well, in a way that I don't think anything that the, uh, that has been done since has had that effect. Yeah. And I was like, because I love Mandalorian. Mandalorian, I think, was the best uh, Disney Plus show. Yeah. And then I watched this and I was like, is it bad to say that I think this is better than Mandalorian? Than Mandalorian? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think so. And that was the moment. I was halfway through the, the show. And I'm happy I have both, you know? I'm happy I have both. Man- oh, yeah. Mandalorian's my new sequel saga. And Andor Rogue One's my new prequel saga, you know. We we're living in good times, and I feel like I kind of needed it this year because not just about Star Wars, but just like media in general, and maybe even also the world actually falling apart. Um, I kind of feel like we need a win, and this reminds me of it. That I mean, there's weeks, and sometimes it might be my anxiety, my depression, but why I like question like why am I even doing this? Mm. Like why am I even doing this show about this stuff? For example. And then that that crosses over even to why am I even doing what I do at work, you know? But there's those moments, those bright spots that are like, that's why I do it. As long as I have the hope for these moments and what they mean for our future, then you got to keep on the grind. You got to fight the empire. And that I guess that's I guess we can go more depth into. That's kind of like what I've been feeling the past couple of weeks, Mm -hmm. past months, I guess. I don't know. I've just been like. He was your empire. I will kill them for you. That's not necessarily a person. Suffer. It's just, I guess, like, 
It's like whatever a feeling, it is. I guess. I don't know. I, I think it's spiritual. It's yeah. existential. Whatever it is, I'll destroy it for you. You'll destroy my existential dread? I'll, I'll throw a laser, laser splitting bomb. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, People will criticize you. <laughs> okay, I'm not Star Wars. <laughs> but, yeah, man, it's like, things like that, it's, it's crazy. It's like, you, you lived your life for so long, and you kind of, at a certain point, like, if you don't necessarily deal with it, it kind of keeps coming back, keeps coming back, and, you know, picks away at you. You might, th- like, you might get distracted for a little bit. And I, th- but I think, like, this, these types of um, media, books, music, TV. Art. Art, yeah. yeah. It's, it's more than just a distraction. Like you said, I think it's a way of reaching catharsis. I think it's a way of, like, I think it is a way of therapy. Yeah. Because it, I don't know, a lot of people are like, oh, like, I like losing myself in this and, or, like, being distracted, taking my mind off of it. And I think it does that. Yeah, but, there's a place for that. But I think it, it does more. I think it's a mirror to the soul. Yeah. And, and having, like you said, having that hope to keep going, because if you are hopeless, then what is the point? Mm -hmm. And there's so many times that I find myself, I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I here? And that's like, you start to take like a defeatist attitude. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, sometimes it's really a struggle to get out of that. Yeah. Because some days like life can be extremely monotonous and tedious. And just you, you ask yourself, where are you going? Like, where am I going from this point in my life? And, and I'm not saying Star Wars is that for everybody because everyone has their own thing. But it's like, and I, that's the thing I love about Star Wars. Yeah. That's what it is to me. And, you know, people always be like, oh, you're, you're a nerd for liking this stuff. You're a geek or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, so what? Who calls that- people that nowadays? Oh, people do. <laughs> yeah, there's still, there, there's dozens of them. And it's just I'm like. I'm glad there's only dozens. <laughs> only dozens. Um, but it's like, it's like. You, feel, you like what you like and like don't feel bad about liking mm-hmm. i feel like there's a point a certain point in time in my life where it's like i kind of like stepped away from liking all that stuff yeah and it's like i i i chased i craved being like either popular or just being liked more mm-hmm. and it wasn't until like later on where i met like someone that that helped me out like my friend alec like he was just, he was just the same way he had gone like a very similar journey and we both like bonded over this and it rekindled my love for star wars it made me real it made me think of my family of you guys because there's a point in time where it's like, I feel like I was gone and like, I wasn't really like connected to my family. Mm-hmm. And so like, after that happened, it, like I started kind of coming back and I spent more time with you guys, spent more time with my, like my friends and like taking part in this media that I care about so much. And now it's like, it's like an integral part of my life and something that I care about and cherish very deeply. But it's more that it's like, it helps me get out of those ruts. It helps me have hope and look forward to, to, to not giving up to not, because that's, that's, well, not who I am, and I know that's not who I am. Mm-hmm. You might have like these like bumps in the road where you fall, you stumble, and like you're in a dark place for a bit. But it's like it's not forever, and that's what like Andor and, and Star Wars like teaches me. It's like no matter the overwhelming odds, no matter everything that you have facing you, it's like as long as you make the choice or the decision to keep fighting, that's what matters. Mm-hmm. That's what's important. And that's what's going to propel you to move forward. Like for me, these next two weeks are like extremely daunting because mm-hmm. of the amount of work because i don't know who decided to make that schedule but <laughs> it's do, it, do, do i need a laser bomb no, no. <laughs> i it think is, that would be a terrorist threat yeah oh, never mind. it is so it's scary like i'm not gonna lie i'm scared yeah but at the same time it's like even just talking about it now it's like i'm building up the strength to like really be be ready to take that on mm-hmm. and to to not even just to like to get by but to do well right because it's like I this whole week was kind of like anxiety inducing with yeah. how much I had to do because I had a lot to do this this week. And then looking to next week, I was like, man, I should have been preparing, but I had so much to do from the week before. Mm-hmm. And it's like all catching up. But even just being here, I think it's it's helping me out like mentally and like not psyching myself out because I know that if that happens, like I'll shut down and then I'll really like I'll give up and then I'll really like. Yeah. It's going to hurt. What's the alternative, you know, to yeah. let them win? Exactly. And I'm not going to let them do that. Do you know how to swim? Because nothing can stop you. Oh, what a what a heartbreaking That was moment. another thing, man. You know? I'm, All of that and that. <sighs> that's what's crazy. Who lives? Who dies? Who tells your story? Wild. I just saw Hamilton the other day, um, in case you don't know the reference. Um, and I keep drawing parallels between those two stories. It's like 
the beginning of a revolution, right? And the people who don't get to make it, all that work, his name was again? The, Kino. Kino. All that work for a better tomorrow for somebody else. Because once you get to the line, you can't cross it. You can't make it into the promised land. You die on that mountain. Everyone else gets to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And that's crazy. And that's, it's almost like going back to Star Wars. Luke's story is nothing without this. Because there's no Death Star run. There's no Battle of Yavin without it. We never get to him. And Luke's story is Luke's story. But it's an extension of Andor's story. Now that we know it. Now that we see, go back and understand the history. And that happens in real life too. The, the machinations and the events that are happening today. That we won't understand how they shape the future until we go back and analyze. And that's just the and that's the study of history. And like you said, you're a geek, you're a nerd, but I see this every day in my job. Like these passions, people afraid I teach drama, uh, you know, afraid to be the drama kid, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The theater kid, you know, afraid to be into history or into literature. And it was like, these are the stories we tell, the stories that we write down about ourselves and the stories that we make up to explore the world. And that's all we have. Everything you've ever learned has come out of a book, a script, words, and they carry significance and they matter. And the words that are in this show, it matters. You know, it matters and it has something to say. And, and that makes me happy, you know. What are your expectations for season two? More sex. Um. <laughs> High benchmark. Yeah. Okay. That, <laughs> maybe an F bomb. Do you think maybe, they're gonna keep maybe, pushing maybe, it? Maybe. Let us Disney. No, let us Disney. Let us. No. Give no. us a, a, a metaphorical F and an F. Oh my goodness! <laughs> You're really pushing the limits of the, <laughs> the Apple Podcast uh, limitations here. I'm here. What that's uh, that's what rebellions are made out of. Pushing limits. We have to press a little tab that limits our audience if we cross those lines. Does it mm -hmm. say like what explicit or something? Yeah, exactly. We have to mark the episode as explicit. Um, which I'm I personally have no interest in, but neither. Okay, good. Just making sure we're all on the same page. What else? Expectations for season two? Um A little Leia, I think, would be nice. No, I'm like, <laughs> you're you're doing that on purpose to hurt me. <laughs> Um, she wouldn't even be little. Be <laughs> I don't think she's even. Oh, she's she is born. What? She's what are you talking about? She's almost Leia already. I have no idea where this. Okay, I'll ask your expectations. Cause I actually have some insight on what supposedly is coming. I, I don't a know, little more organization, I guess, from the rebellion. Okay, yeah, what we see, see in Rogue One. That's what's like beautiful to, to be it's coming to that. I like that concept. Yavin pockets, pockets of dissension of. Fomenting, right? That was the word. Oh, yeah. I think they, yeah. Pockets of fomenting that now have a unified cause. And I think, yeah, getting together, like the, the beginnings of the, like what we actually know as the rebellion, because there's a lot of different um, factions. Mm -hmm. So I think seeing that, maybe them finding Yavin yeah. as a suitable base mm -hmm. would be yes. really cool to see. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Do you know if there's like a time jump? Or something? Yeah, there is a time jump. I, want, I, I think it'd be interesting to see. Because one of the things that I thought made the show interesting, like I said, it was that it was in the background of Jedi's, right? Mm -hmm. But you mentioned J Yavin, right? It'd be interesting to see now characters that we are already established in Star Wars in the show. Like who? I mean, you already you have uh, what's her name? Mon Mothma. Mon Moth. Whoa. Mon Mothma. Mon Mothma. Like on oh that we have already. Mon yeah, Mothma. heard maybe General Akbar, something like that. Um, we re we see Saw Guerrero in it, obviously. Yeah, Jimmy. Um, what about which I love that I love how it's a like a it's a prequel. I was afraid about all the Rogue One characters being yeah. in the movie because I was like they're gonna shoehorn them in. No, 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 I'm not, not talking about them. But what about you know if you start uh, playing around, maybe and like I said, I feel weird saying this because I like the fact that it's its own separate thing away from Jedi's. Mm -hmm. You know, but some of the rebels in uh, in Star Wars Rebels. Stuff like that. I mean, it would be interesting to see. Man, you think they could... They I don't know. Do I have idea. no idea. I don't want to say anything. Yeah. But. I know they're fast-forwarding to, like, right up to Rogue One. Okay. So it's like... It so takes, it only has one more season left? Yeah, that's yeah, it. This is The show is always planned as two seasons, and they basically recorded them back-to-back. -back. 
Like they're already filming season two right now. Okay. So they, it was always meant to be how many episodes? This was twelve. This it was, was meant 12. to be twenty four episodes. Mm. At first, they didn't know if it was going to be one twenty four hours. Twenty four hour. One twenty four. Although it is like a That's hour long episodes. show. Yeah. If it was on TV, it'd be an hour long show. Um, twenty four episode season, but then they cut it into two. But it's greenlit, and it will start, I think, months out from Rogue One, and it will end mm. right before Rogue One. So that's what we have to expect from the show, timeline wise, at least. Maybe they'll introduce a uh, Gen uh, Gen Z G- Gen Gen's uh, father, <laughs> Galen. All right, maybe we'll go and take a look over there. What's going on with him? Well, because they introduced spoilers that's, after the credits. That's not... Oh yeah, if you didn't see the final credit, because most of this we show didn't, yeah. did not see the after credit scene. I guess it's not something you really expect out of Star Wars. Yeah. But I check it on everything now. Like I didn't expect it for this. That, that. Yeah. So the Death Star is in play. And I guess I, I would expect that it would be a focal point. I don't think that's just an Easter egg. This show does not bother with Easter eggs. I do not want to see Vader in the show. No, I do not want to I see Vader keep at him all. Away. I don't I don't think yeah. we will, man. I don't think there's many chance. Oh, he was in Rogue One actually. You never know. Maybe. You know what? You never know. You're right. Vader you never or, know. or the other, uh, or you know, the emperor yeah. keep them away. There's very little connection. Oh, you know who we could see at Dumi. Uh, That's okay. What? Thrawn would be cool. Oh, mm-hmm, oh, and that would feed into what they're doing with it, all the other with Star Wars the, shows. With the IBS? Because mm-hmm. he, because that. Irritable so, bowel syndrome? Because <laughs> ISB, I'm sorry, the ISB, they re- they reminded me of Thrawn. Like that type of meticulous You heard it work. here first. Link, Thrawn has IBS in season two of Andor. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's the type of content I want. Oh, man, I remember. Uh... Is his poop blue? Is his poop green? We don't know. It would be Is green. Is it brown? Right? Oh, it could be red, but I don't think it's blue. Um, I really like the the ISB stuff. Yeah. Yes. Like the the sets where they all meet, the conversations that they have, the mm-hmm. dialogue between them. I thought it was man. Because what's the name of the rebel the rebellion guy? Uh, in the in the show, the guy with the Luthen. Him. He kind of reminds me of Thrawn. Yeah. With the whole art thing. How good is he, by the way? Skarsgård. Like, that's pretty good. So good. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, hmm. It's like the good version of I it. Like the good version yeah. of Thrawn. It'd be interesting to have both of them talk. Yeah. He has some of the things that Thrawn will have eventually, by the way. He has that, like, um, Hela, her oh, family. Oh, Hera. Yeah, Hera, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Her um, her family thing. Her the, family, uh, what is it, like, genealogy type of thing? Yeah, that little artifact. Art, yeah. Um. So you had mentioned the characters that are from like the star wars universe in here like mon mothma mon mothma wow the amount of use of her backstory that we yeah. have and they took her in a direction i would never expect this whole like loveless marriage yeah and like her trying to fight and like keeping her secrets while having all this you know issues hey, re- at home really quick yeah go ahead the blonde girl what's her name i forgot her name uh mon mothma's sister sister okay yeah her yeah is she with yeah i think that yeah they're Sita? together yeah they, they handle it indirectly right and 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 somebody, yeah, absolutely, mm. yeah. Um, and even that, kind of sure making was, again baby steps, yeah, yeah kind of making friendship or yeah, moving that forward. But back to Saw Guerrero, he appears earlier on in the season, and I was like, oh, that was kind of just an Easter egg for an Easter egg. But then when he comes back, it pays off him trying to do that heist with the other guy and the way Luthen sacrificed says, yeah. some rebels in order to move forward that was the cool. cause. And that conversation about the lives that are hanging in the balance and making sacrifices that aren't yours to make what a great mm. i would not want to be part of a rebellion at all yeah well that's what i learned from this show mm. i think that with the you know it was a different time this is the late 70s early 80s like it's a very idealized version of the rebellion they're all good they're all like Mm-mm. true believers and but here man rebellion is dirty and like you got the bomb maker in the finale and like he's ready for stuff to go down, you know. And it's almost like the skeeviness and the underhandedness, but that's what it takes to win a war, yeah. especially from the bottom. No, I and, mean it's it's like, I mean you mentioned how you you watched Hamilton and yeah, it was like that. Yeah, like you do what you like you do what it takes to win. Like against overwhelming odds, mm-hmm. you have like you have to grind that out. Like you have to find you have to find a way. Like if it's it doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter how it is, mm-hmm. especially when you are fighting against those odds. Like, it it teaches you. It's like because you're right. 
when I was a kid, I want to be a rebel. And it's like, as an adult, I'm good. Do I want to be? A yeah. Rebel? Like, uh-huh. I it, be. it makes you think. And it's like, can you, do you ever see yourself in that position? But it's like, you're not, like, you don't know what these people like live, like what their life is like. And what they sacrifice on this show. They sacrifice love. They sacrifice family and they sacrifice the, their lives. And even worse, the lives of others. Mm. Again, who lives, who dies. Uh, dying is easy. Living is harder. Yeah. I can't believe you're so deep. Where are you coming up with these? Again, I'm just referencing Hamilton. But um, you came up with a little exercise for us, and I think we can end on this note. Oh, yes. A little activity I thought yeah, would be interesting. Right, right? It was inspired it. by the first or the second arc of the show, um, the heist. So I thought it'd be interesting to you know play a game where we build our own heist team, right? Now, every heist team, every heist, I'm sorry, has a, has a team, right? Has a crew, has a member. Mm-hmm. So... We're going to pick our care. Each of us will pick our group, right? Okay. And you have to pick them from Star Wars characters uh, that are... How many members we got? I'll tell you right now. Let me okay. go look at my notes. Your rule set. My rule set. All right. So each... So and this group, is... We're doing this on the fly because like he just dropped this on us like five seconds exactly. before the episode. So we have no plan. Very creative. All right. So you have a mastermind. You got me someone that makes a plan. Okay. You have a Jedi because it's Star Wars, right? Okay. Uh, you have a pilot. Someone to drive the you know ship the ship there you go uh-huh. you have the muscle or you know uh, the brute someone strong that can take care of the big stuff okay. and obviously a droid cuz it's star wars again it's star, star wars. wars yeah and then what do you contribute to all this oh so i'm on the crew so we're on the crew as well on okay. your own crew all right i'm on the crew so yeah um, I don't know who wants to go first. Like, we can go section by section. I, let's go section by okay. section. So the first one is a mastermind. And you can't, and you can't pick. Who yeah, the yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. Somebody beats you to it. Yeah. So. Okay, mastermind. All right. Anybody want to go first? You can start. The emperor. Ooh. That this heist is gonna go down. If the emperor is in charge, this That's heist it. is gonna yeah. go down. I mean, although he did have his planet blown up like three times, so maybe not. Uh, Thrawn. Thrawn. Oof, that's actually a better Dang, choice. That's a good that's one. That's a better choice. Yeah. Um, man, I feel like you guys got perfect people <laughs> to be masterminds. I'm gonna go the opposite. Uh, Kylo. You get me? Okay. Okay. I would like to update my answer to be the Lego Emperor mm. because he's a lot funner to be around. Cuter too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. After that, we have a Jedi. You have to have a Jedi in the group. Okay. Okay. Anybody? I think Gabe knows who, who what Jedi. No. No, you. you. Oh, I think you know who you want on this crew. I know what Jedi you're gonna pick. I know who I want. Exactly. So just call him. Luke. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say it. You know, I, I should have just taken him and then. Yeah. Said, oh, yeah. Like... Nah. Yeah. Which Luke specifically? Return of the Jedi. Luke. That's right. Mm. He's got a black glove. Mm. He's got a hood. Green Jedi. I mean, green lightsaber. The gloves fit. Yeah. <laughs> then you must. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, my Jedi. Who's my Jedi? You got yours? Yeah, yeah man. Okay, go ahead. Yaddle. You know, I would fight you on that, but Tales of the Jedi yeah. would change my mind. No, but I'm, I, 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 I kind of regret picking Yaddle? Kylo. Oh, Kylo? Because you got Kylo and Yaddle? Yeah. yeah that's not going to no, work No, no, because I kind of had a, a plan of what I wanted my team to look like. Kylo like just, uniforms or look like? I wanted to have a, a team full of short kings and queens. Okay. Kylo's like too tall. Four. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, you messed up on uh, your first pick. I know. Too. My fi- on your first pick. Don't worry. I once drafted uh, CM Punk as my first pick. Mm. Anyways, um, so I still got my Jedi left. Man, I don't want to take it from you. Let me look at all the statues of Jedi's that are in my. I got it. This is gonna be this is gonna be a bold move. All right, Finn, because he learns the Force after Rise of Skywalker. That's right. mm. So Finn is my Jedi. He's your Jedi. That's a good Confirmed. one. Confirmed. All right. What about? Pilot, who do you have as your pilot? Okay, you sure? I don't want to steal a good one. I'm gonna go with Wedge, Wedge and Tilas. I think that's the right answer. Whatever your answer is, it's the wrong answer. My answer is the right answer. I think my answer is right. What's your answer? Well, I kind of want to marry a Twilix, so um, I have Hera. Hera. Oh, this, there's only a second answer to me, there is, but I'm not gonna do it. You know what uh, what I'm thinking? Yeah, so you, what are you thinking? I'm think I'm gonna go with Poe. No, that was my second answer. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought you were thinking Han. You know what? When I think pilot, I think X wings. I don't think big navigator mm. ships. You know, but I for think pulling a heist. 
It should would be in there. You're right, be, though. And he's a smuggler. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Yeah, that's actually the actual right answer. And none of us picked it. None of these heists are going to work out. I really nope. thought you were going to pick Han. Because I was thinking we sneak it onto an X Wing and we just. It's just. It's funny. You're right. It's. Well, it depends. We didn't really establish what we're what we're stealing, but yeah. But if you're yeah. carrying that many people, it's not going to be an X-wing. Yeah, you're right. Well, no, no, because you have an X-wing. Your pilot is your getaway pilot, so you load the X-wing and it leaves, and the rest of the crew leaves on another ship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, you got to have the like the Fast and the Furious fake out. What's the next thing? The next one is muscle. Who is your muscle? I got, I got one. All right, hit it. I got an Ewok. I don't know who, but I got an Ewok as my muscle. No, you got to pick a specific Ewok. The king of the the one, the main one, yeah, yeah. the main wicked, one, the, wicked. yeah, wicked. There you yeah, go. There you go. I don't know. He had a name. That's uh, everyone has a name. <laughs> That's true. That's a Warwick Davis, right? <laughs> are, you, are you not gonna watch Willow because of Warwick Davis? Do you not like my pick? Do Am you, I offending you? No, I hate Warwick Davis. Why do you hate Warwick Davis? Oh, because we went to Gal- we went to Galactic Knights. And we just finished eating. When we come out, this is what, at Hollywood Studios? Hollywood Studios, yeah. We just finished eating. We walk outside. Mm-hmm. And Warwick Davis just is just strolling along in his little scooter. or uh, A human transport system, Segway. His Segway. Human transport system. And, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Warwick. I was like, how? I was like, what did I say? I was like, I don't, I don't even think it was. I don't even think I asked him for a picture because he was going so bad. I was like, "Hey, War, love you." And I don't know. Maybe he missed. I don't know. Maybe he didn't hear me. I don't know what happened or what was going on with him. <laughs> he just drives away in his little Segway and flicks us off. <laughs> what? You don't remember that? I remember that. There's a reason why we think he's a jerk, but yeah, I don't. And that, I, I can't remember. And that's what. the reason. That's unfathomable to me, having been there. It's, it has literally been in my mind since that night, and that's why I don't like him. You know what's super funny? We, were, we watched Willow again now in anticipation for the series that just dropped. I haven't seen the first two episodes yet. But she was like, isn't this guy a jerk? And I was like, based on what? And I thought she was going to refer back to this story. Who's my, she? Oh, my wife. I was the only person I'm watching with. And she goes, she goes yeah, because of that show, Life is, Life's Too Short. And it's real, and I was like, "That's not real. That's not a duck." He's like, "Nah." He's, a, <laughs> he's like, "He did too good of a job." He's that guy's a jerk. I'm pretty sure he is a jerk, though. Well, but if he get, flicked you off, I think, we love you, Warwick. Oh, he's a jerk. Mm. But anyways, he's on your team. Yeah, he's my muscle. Wicked. <laughs> I was gonna make you choose the the guy the the Ewok that's like a code cracker from Last Shot. That novel yeah, yeah, yeah. That we had to all read for some reason. Yeah, wasn't he an Ugna? No, he's an Ewok. No, he's an, an Ewok. Ewok, Ewok yeah. and they had Ewok and an Ugnaught. They had an Ewok and an mm. Ugnaught, yeah. Um, my muscle is Zeb from Star I'm Wars Rebels. Mm. Yeah. Because I can talk to him. A lot of the muscle you can't talk to. That's true. He, is, he can speak. He's a yeah. Lassat, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know who I always imagined couldn't speak was Bosk, the lizard man from mm. Empire Strikes Back with those long arms. And like, when he Clone speaks- War, yeah, when Clone mm. War, so he just speaks English. Mm. And I was like, this is weird. I'm going to go with Mando. That's a good muscle. That's a bro. good muscle. Dang. Uh, yeah. All okay. right. After that, we have droid. Who would be your droid? I go with Chopper. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Come I, on, man. I almost, <laughs> I almost oh, put Gable, us an explicit. Gable was, ready to, <laughs> Gable was ready to give us a. Why speech. do you hate Chopper? Because he flicked me off. What? No, that didn't happen. The chopper one didn't happen. Uh, I always thought chopper was annoying. You like you're not the only one who's told me this. I just don't. I always thought chopper was annoying. I always show. thought R two D two was annoying, but like that's their job to be annoying. No, R two was always endearing. Okay. All right, so you're taking chopper. Yeah. Man, I don't know his name. Go, go ahead. Uh. A droid. Hmm. I don't know why I chose Chopper. Kind of regretted it immediately. <laughs> it was a bit, and yeah, uh, now you're stuck with Chopper. Yeah, I am because I thought uh, I'd rather I'd rather BB-8. I think BB-8 is the most adorable oh, one. BB-8 is a good one. Maybe the one from uh, the the video game. Oh, BD. BD, yeah. BD one. Two. Okay. I I got the name of mine because I couldn't remember his name. BT one. Mm. He is a um, uh, like a killer. 
he's almost like a C-3PO. He, he kind of looks like a C-3PO. He's like a protocol droid, but he's like, he's a murderer. Oh, I remember that. Where's that from? He, uh, he's Dr. Afra's uh, yeah, droid. Yeah, he's like a murder droid. Yeah, he's a murder droid. Dang. So I figure I need some backup. My my. You can get the IG droid. Yeah, I was thinking about IG. Oh, IG-88 is good. Mm, the Taika one, I think. The Taika one. Oh, that one's good too, yeah. It's in Taika, the IG. Yeah, that's the IG model. He's not 88. It's one from Empire yeah, yeah, Strikes Back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. The IG, you, what's his name? You know, IG 13, 11, 42, 16. Okay. No idea. THX 1138. <laughs> okay. So those are our droids. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. And then what would you and, contribute to this? What would you contribute? I think it'd be the person that makes everyone's bed <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> are you a big bed you, maker? You're just the squire. I think it'd be nice. I feel like I wouldn't have much to contribute, so I might as well like become the maid. You get me? Yeah. Make food for everyone. Make sure they're fed. They have a nice warm bed when they get back from their missions. Take care of them, like the mom of the group. Yeah. Or dad. I feel like I'd be the guy who was like, "Come on, guys, we got to come up with a plan," and then like would have a bunch of terrible ideas, and then other people would say good ideas, and then I'd rephrase them and make them think that it was. Basically what I do in real life, like it's mm. basically my everyday job, just rephrasing things and then convincing them that it's a good idea. And then when it's time to do the work, like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the support. Um, probably be their, uh, no, nah, it wouldn't be me. I was going to say social media manager. <laughs> no, it'd be Lay. Lay'd be great at that. Yeah, it'd be Lay. Why does a heist need a social media manager? To distract. Uh, cause you want to be, yeah. Oh, we're on the thaw. Psych. It's like this is a green screen. We're on Bobani. <laughs> um, we're in Exago. I think Exago. Oh <laughs> Would not want to be in that planet <laughs> at all. I hate that movie. <laughs> I hate that movie. Um, talk about movie. things that just make you depressed. For real. Oh my god. Never watch that right before you have to study. Can't wait till we do an entire episode. Of I would try one day. Okay. I'll try to be I think I just try to convince Luke to teach me. Mm. The train you me. would be the you'd, oh, be, you'd be the pot of one. You'd be broom boy. Yeah. You'd, you'd be the next broom boy. Only this time it won't lead to nothing. It won't lead to nothing. It so lead it'll to lead to something. Anything. Okay. All right. Double negatives. Math is hard. Oh, really quick, talking about leading to nothing. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> What a transition. An expectation for season two. Maybe we find out more about his sister. Uh, um, Ando. Ando. Oh. <laughs> Cassian's sister. His, that, we didn't even talk about we that. Ta- yeah. Like, I think it's the first time that we get a human species that doesn't speak basic. Yeah. Right? It's the first time we see. And that's funny because you were mentioning like, oh, do they have these words in the Star Wars universe? I always kind of feel like. We're watching Star Wars through the lens of it being translated to us because they don't speak English because there's no England, right? Mm -hmm. So they speak basic. And I like to think that it doesn't sound like what we talk. It's just that like for the sake of the movies and TV, we're, we're, we're hearing it that way. But this is the first time we see a human civilization that speaks another language besides basic. So the indigenous people of whatever planet it is that Andor is from. That'd be cool. Find out what happened to his sister. and Yeah. Okay. You think we'll go back? Maybe. 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 Why bring it up? Oh, because that's his origin. He's, he has a, uh, what's it, um, an immigrant story. Mm. Oh, just like Hamilton. An immigrant story. Andor is Hamilton. That's why it's so great. That's what it is. That's right. Okay. I think, I think that's the note we end on, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't watched Hamilton or Star Wars... Watch the other one, or both, because they're basically Andor, 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 sorry, Andor and Hamilton are basically the same story. Yeah, Hamilton is the Andalorian. (laughs) You've been saving that all all episode, haven't you? And on that note, we'll be with you once again next week. Till next time. Peace. Keep searching.